Hi, my name's Charlotte Bolton. I'm the National Sea Search Coordinator and I work for the, the Marine Conservation Society. I'd like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to present at this year's Porcupine Marine Natural History Society virtual conference connecting to our coast. Today I'm going to talk about some of the field surveys I carried out when I was employed on the Panache project at Dorset Wildlife Trust looking at intertidal honeycomb worm reefs in West Dorset with a brief foray into East Devon. I'm sure most of you already know what honeycomb worm reefs look like but here's an image of our study target, um, quite distinctive, taken at Western Airbin Beer in East Devon last October. This trip to East Devon was prompted by Bolch's 1957 paper in the Journal of the Marine Biological Association. So, just a quick reminder about honeycomb worms, Sabellaria alveolata. They're a tube building polychaete worm. They form colonies which eventually form these enormous, or well, they can be enormous, biogenic reefs with a very distinctive honeycomb pattern. So they're quite easy to recognise. Um, in Britain and Ireland, they're at the northernmost extent of their range in the Solway Firth and Northern Ireland, and the easternmost extent of their range in Lyme Bay. So they're nationally quite rare here, but they can be locally very, very common. They're generally intertidal, but they are also found in the subtidal, such as in the Bristol Channel and Northern Ireland. They're considered an important habitat for conservation, so the original biodiversity action plans and the derivatives thereof. The biogenic reefs create an increase in local biodiversity through the associated communities of plants and animals that grow on and around them. And they also stabilise shore components such as boulders, cobbles, etc. Now, back in 2017, there was a citizen science reporting project set up by IFREMER and with the universities of Plymouth, Bangor and Porto in Portugal called the Rehab Project. And they wanted citizen scientists, just, just the general public, to report in where they found these honeycomb worm reefs to get a better idea of the distribution. So this study came about, as I say, originally because of the, 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 the Totterdale report to English Nature as it was then, um, based on field visits, field surveys that he'd made in West Dorset in 2000 and 2001. So the aim was to ascertain the current distribution of these biogenic reefs in that area, to compare their distribution and abundance with those original surveys, and to record the associated biodiversity at those sites. So here's a map of the study sites ranging from Beer in East Devon, the westernmost site that I went to, um, across to Eep Great Ebb here in the east, which is just southwest of uh, Bridport. Uh, most of the most of the surveys took place in 2014 and 2015, from the west of Lyme Regis, right here on the Devon border, to Eep Great Ebb. And I, uh, there was a couple of opportunistic trips in more recent years. One of which was the porcupine trip to Charmouth, the field trip to Charmouth in May of 2015. And you may recognise some of these people uh, on the shore at Charmouth, being very careful not to trample on the sable area that you can see on the boulders here in the foreground. Uh, and as mentioned at the start, there was the trip to Beer in East Devon last October. So the Totterdale report followed the terminology of the 1984 report by Cunningham et al and classified the colonies of, of Sabellaria alveolata that he found as one of three different types. The first of these was known as crevice colonies where the worms were aggregating between pebbles, cobbles, boulders on the shore and gluing them together. So here you can see in the first image that in the overhang of that boulder, the worms have started to, to aggregate together there and, and, and form a reef, at least start to start to aggregate together there. And here, looking down on um, some cobbles between boulders at Eep Great Ebb, you can see the very distinctive honeycomb pattern where those those worms have have aggregated between those between those cobbles. The next type of colony type that was that was uh, uh, decided upon to describe these reefs was sheets or patches. 
and this is where the worms form a thin layer on the surface of upward facing rocks, as you can see here. When they're just getting going, or if they've been damaged by being walked on, they can be quite insignificant and hard to spot. But if they're undisturbed and given the right conditions, they can, they can, you can see the honeycomb starting to form here. And eventually they can start to form these little mounds here in the centre of the image. And, and again, if left undisturbed, eventually they can form these large hummocks, which are very visually distinctive and obvious, seen here at Charmouth looking west towards Lyme Regis in the distance. And again here, also at Charmouth, looking back towards the east. The group at Ifremare, who were the lead partners on the rehab project mentioned earlier, have been looking into using LIDAR and other remote sensing techniques to monitor and evaluate the distribution of Sabellaria alveolata reefs in the Bay of Mont Saint-Michel, just across the channel in Britain. And that work was published uh, last year, it's open access in the journal Frontiers of Marine Science. Um, it should be quite easy to Google. You don't, if you're not going to get, you're not really going to get the chance to copy down that that DOI link up in the top right. So if you Google for that, that should be quite easy to find. Uh, this this second image uh, shows how they compared the field survey data, the lidar bathymetry data, the remote sensing, and then properties derived from that bathymetry data. So here in D, um, they've looked at the rugosity or the, the, the lumpiness um, of the environment and compared that to where they found the Savalaria reefs. So one of the pressures on these biogenic reefs is damage from human activities, either indirectly in the form of climate change, and this first image here shows Chesil Cove getting absolutely pounded in one of the big storms from February 2014, which was the winter before I carried out the main field visits. Um, we don't have Sabalaria down at the, the far end of Chesil Cove, um, but the whole of Lyme Bay basically got pounded like this over the winter of 2014, uh, 2013 and 2014. And then this second image illustrates a much more obvious human pressure in the form of visitors to beaches. So there's a lot of footfall here. This is Charmouth in February, and you can imagine just how many people are there on a sunny summer's day. There's lots of information boards at Charmouth aimed at the people who go there to do fossil hunting, and warning them not to venture too close to the, 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 the cliffs at the back of the beach, but there's nothing about the worm reefs that are on the beach there. Uh, and I think that's an omission. I think there's a good opportunity there for some public engagement and uh, telling them about these worm reefs. So what does that damage look like? Well, some of it is very obvious, big holes in the hummocks, as we can see here, and, and that could well have come from a storm, the, 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 the reef getting pounded by those, those cobbles and pebbles and loose stuff. And they're relatively easy to damage. If they're, if they're trampled on, and it's fairly superficial damage, that would repair fairly quickly, probably less than a month. More extensive damage like this takes a lot longer, weeks or months to repair. And if you completely remove the reefs, um, you're looking at larval resettlement in order to recreate those reefs. And the larvae need either adult tubes or remains of tubes, etc., in order to prompt them to resettle. And they also need a good supply of that tube building sediment. So it's very variable and it can potentially take 10 years in some circumstances for the reefs to reform and, and, and regenerate after, after damage. So the repeat visit to Charmouth in 2018, three years after the initial visit in 2015, found much less evidence of those big hummocks I showed you in the, in the photos. So there's some damage. You can see that it could be storm, it could be trampling, but it's really, they're big hummocks. You can see there's a 2P there for scale. They're, they've been quite smashed by, by, this, by this damage and it's quite deep into the hummock. So the plans to continue this study are as follows. Um, COVID restrictions permitted, obviously. Repeat visits to the same sites um, to investigate whether the distribution of these reefs in Dorset is extending eastwards. We 
already found um, areas with, with these Sabalaria reefs further east than the Totterdell surveys. When we revisited five years later, he didn't find them further east than Golden Cap, and we found them at Eep, which is a couple of miles further down the coast. Um, and prompted by the diving restrictions last summer in 2020, which meant we were doing more shallow shore dives, we want to look and see if we can establish whether we've got alveolata extending into the shallow subtidal or whether we've got spinulosa, Savalaria spinulosa, which is the other species, which we already know well from diving the deeper reefs in Lyme Bay. So finally, I'd just like to acknowledge, I say I was working for Dorset Wildlife Trust on the Panache project at the time, um, and also with the Dorset Environmental Records Centre. Obviously, I'd like to thank the people who helped me out on the field survey visits because there's no way I could have done all this on my own. Um, my husband, who gets dragged along on these things, um, some familiar names possibly from Sea Search, uh, and the, the three people who were Dorset Wildlife Trust interns at the time. Um, I say, I was working for Dorset Wildlife Trust then. I now work for the Marine Conservation Society on Sea Search. There's my work address if anybody has any questions and my personal email address if anybody fancies visiting Dorset and coming to have a look at these reefs or possibly going diving sometime. So thank you for your attention.